Sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydrogen carbonate has many common applications. It has been utilized in certain chemical fire extinguishers, toothpastes, buffers, certain disinfectants, and deodorants. Perhaps the most common use of sodium bicarbonate is as a leavening agent for baked goods, hence the name baking soda. When sodium bicarbonate is heated, it decomposes into sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide produced in the decomposition is responsible for the rising action in certain baked goods. The setup for this experiment involves the items shown on the screen. The first step is weighing an empty test tube and then adding two to three scoops of sodium bicarbonate and weighing the test tube and contents again. You'll assemble the equipment as shown, which involves first inserting the stopper and bent glass tubing into the mouth of the test tube and then clamping the test tube in place as shown, making sure the bicarbonate is spread thinly along the length of the test tube. You'll then start your Bunsen burner with a gentle blue flame and set it up near the end of the test tube to heat the contents. You'll need to add two drops of Bromphimo Blue to a beaker of 50 milliliters of water, and then you'll bring the beaker toward the tip of the glass tubing to allow the escaping gases to come in contact with the solution. As the gases bubble into the solution, note any color changes. You'll continue heating the test tube for five to seven minutes to continue the decomposition reaction. You may notice some condensation forming on the end of the test tube from the reaction, but be sure to burn this off using your Bunsen burner. You'll allow the test tube to cool and you'll remask the test tube and its contents, which at this point should only be sodium carbonate. Based on the mass of the sodium bicarbonate used and the stoichiometry of the reaction, you should be able to predict the mass of the sodium carbonate in the test tube. To add a level of suspense to the lab, you will be asked to predict the final mass of the test tube and the contents before you mass it. Your grade will depend upon how close your prediction is to the actual mass. You'll then calculate your experimental yield. Using the sample data on the screen, we will work through this process. Using the first two entries, we can subtract to obtain the mass of the bicarbonate used. We see that that's about 3.87 grams. Then using the stoichiometry of the reaction, we see that a theoretical yield of 2.44 grams of sodium carbonate should be obtained. This means the mass of the test tube and the final contents should be about 43.79 grams. The percent yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. The actual yield may be obtained by subtracting the first entry from the third entry. Doing so gives us a value of 2.13 grams. This means our percent yield is about 87.3%.